the big match now and the one that I hope is full with 30,000 people is the one against Real Sociedad. So we are about 48 hours away from the match. And it seems like, Rafa, that Memphis Dubai and Eric Garcia will be registered. Uh, I mean, at this point, based on some of the stuff that's coming out of the Catalan press, right? Your, 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 your head says that, I mean, we have to trust the people we trust. So he and Garcia will be registered. But our heart says, I'm not sure about that, right? Until there's, he was given the number nine shirt, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Remember, Luis Suarez, because of the transfer ban at the time, he didn't even play until January. So Barcelona have survived not being able to register people before. Aguero won't be registered because he'll be missing 10 weeks anyway. So just roll your eyes on that one. And it is worrisome that Aguero, he might be completely cooked, which is a bummer because he's 33 and you think that he wouldn't be totally done yet. But hey, injuries add up. Uh, and yeah, I mean, if Garcia is registered or not, it does stink for him. But with Pique, Araujo, Lengle, technically Umtiti, Mingueza coming back in September, and even Arnaud Kamas if he needed. And actually, I should say De Jong as well. Um, Barca, in theory, could survive with that center back group until January if there was something with Eric Garcia. But there's no replacement in Memphis Dubai cannot be registered. They're, Barcelona have a problem on their hands. But uh, again, it seems like this might all be crying for naught. But I mean, <laughs> after this last week, we're traumatized, Rafa. <laughs> Is anything believable? Hey, I, I don't blame anyone for being pessimistic, uh, traumatized. I completely understand, even though I'm optimistic. We'll get to that um, a little bit later. But um, but yeah, th- we, we've read today from the Catalan press that apparently the club told them different sources that they're, conf- they're confident Memphis and uh, Eric Garcia will be registered before Sunday's game against Real Sociedad. But uh, allow me after this week that un- until I see an official statement – that, hey, Eddie Garcia and Memphis were able to be registered. I'm going to get keep my guard up because I I don't want to get hurt again, Dan. So I got my guard up. And I want to because I, especially Memphis, I think with like there's no – I don't think there's any debate that if we have to choose, obviously, to who to – let's say we can only register one for Sunday's game, it's obvious that it'll be Memphis because of how important he's been – throughout this entire preseason. So at least for me, and I think that's the sentiment like you have and a lot of coolers have that, that until we see an official statement, we're just going to keep our guards up because we don't want to get hurt again. We've been, we've been hurt this week. So yeah. Well, Memphis or not, Barca are playing. We also see a dad. So uh, I usually end with this part. We'll do the preview for La Real in a minute, but I want to start with the Barca side of this preview. Um, can you give me your starting 11 for this one? And then we kind of work our way backwards as to why you chose that and uh, the direction that Ronald Koeman should probably go in against Real Sociedad. Sure. Are we going to have Memphis, pretend Memphis is going to be registered I mean, for this or not? Yes, Memphis and a no Memphis, because I think that just swaps out one player, unless it changes your whole team formation. But to me, it's just no, not necessarily. So I'll, I'll include number Memphis, nine, number nine. <laughs> if you, if yeah. So I think obviously Neto is going to start. Ter Stegen is in the final stages of his recovery, and then I think the back four will be Pique and Naraujo. I think that Hino Des will get the nod over Emerson to start the season, and Jordi Alba will obviously get the nod ahead of Alejandro Valde for obvious reasons. I think the midfield will be Busquets. I think Frankie, by the looks of it, has been shown training with the team, even though he he was a little bit injured. Uh, I don't know if it was against the Red Bull um, Salzburg or Stuttgart, but I think he'll be in. I think the biggest question in the midfield is whether we've read reports if Pedri will start or not. And I think that could be the the question mark in the midfield. Will Kuman put Pedri in after playing 100,000 games in the last year? So will be will it either be Pedri or Sergio Roberto or will Demir get the nod in the midfield like we saw against Juventus? Um, I think it it'll be either Pedri or Sergio Roberto. I don't think Kuman will go and put Demir in in the midfield. And then up top, I think it'll just be Griezmann. I think it'll be Braithwaite, and I'll, I'm I'm gonna be optimistic, and I think we're gonna be able to register Memphis. So I think up top it'll be the same trio that we saw against um, Juventus. Interesting. So I agree with I agree with your back line. I don't think there's any debate on the left-footed thing, Araujo and PK. 
they're just leagues ahead of Utiti and Lengle, even if he wasn't injured, I, I think he's one of those ones that behind the scenes and I know he's injured, but just like Neto and just like Brothwaite, that's one of the guys that I think Barcelona need to be on the phone about. I, I know that you'd prefer to get rid of Coutinho and MTT, but you've got to be, Barcelona should be desperate to get rid of anybody they possibly can, um, who's obviously not one of the untouchable young post under 23 players. Um, happy 22nd birthday to Ricky Pooch, by the way. But uh, unfortunately, being 22 is not going to get him to start. I agree with you in the midfield. Two of the three of Pedri de Young and Roberto based on injuries and availability for Pedri and de Young. Uh, I mean, if all three are healthy, but don't worry. We're going to see Pedri de Young Busquets in the midfield quite a lot this year. Don't worry if we don't get to see it for game one. So I do expect Roberto to start. But does he start next to Pedri or de Young? Again, that's based on availability of the other two. And then for the front three, I said it on Monday and I'll repeat it again. That to me, it's either Brothwaite out and Memphis in or Brothwaite obviously starts because Memphis is registered. And then you have a much bigger discussion point. But I think Demir needs to start. And I and I think he starts on the right wing, not in the midfield. Even though he started in the midfield against Juventus, I think even in the Liga, Demir can start on the right wing and you don't really give up, especially with the overlapping runs of Dest. Uh, Demir can cut it. I mean, just stay in. And uh, yeah, it's a learning experience for him, but he was more impactful. He had more progressive dribbles. He was just statistically and eye test wise more impactful against Juventus and against Red Bull, uh, Red Bull Salzburg than Griezmann was. Uh, and so Griezmann starting no matter what, 100% chance, 120% chance Griezmann starting. I'm, that's not a knock on Griezmann. That's to say that if Demir is having that kind of impact, we've seen that Kuman. If a young player has an impact, he plays him and he might be stubborn about others. And you might argue that guys are making impacts and they're not getting time. But if you make the kind of impact that Demir has had in his starts, and he's also started in the preseason, he started all but one of those matches. And again, it's a reminder that Kuman seems to found his not even flavor of the month, but the, the player that he is expecting big things from. And that is Yusuf Demir. So I think it needs to be either Griezmann, Brothway, Demir or Griezmann uh, and Memphis and Demir. I just, the spacing with Brothwaite to me against Juventus, just, it didn't work. I said it on Monday as well, but it's either Griezmann as a false nine, uh, kind of dropping in deeper and defending almost an attacking midfielder. And then Memphis coming out on the left wing, or if Memphis trying to hold the ball up, if we also see that are going to play that way, Memphis holds the ball up in the middle and Griezmann basically cuts in off the left wing where he's less comfortable, but there's a lot of switching going on there. You usually see in the buildup, as Memphis drops deeper, Griezmann kind of runs in behind, but he runs in through the half spaces in the central channel. So don't think of it as Griezmann on the left, Memphis in the middle. It's more like both of them on, on two thirds of the field. And then Demir kind of is given the right wing to overlap with Dest. Uh, and then kind of Alba. Really, the question with that front three comes in with how is Alba going to make an impact if you don't have uh, uh, what's his name? The He wore number 10 for Barts for a long time. Uh, the guy who was always at the. It was the guy that Alba liked to cross into. I can't remember his name. He's an Argentine player. Ah, uh, yeah. I think he's from Argentina, but I, if Alba doesn't have a I new, don't remember his name. <laughs> right. So if Alba can't cross into Messi at the at the penalty spot, well, he's going to have to find some basically a new thing to do with, with the run that Griezmann doesn't make. Memphis and him, I think their combinations were pretty good. I was actually happy with their chemistry. And we'll see if they can build on that. But yeah, it all comes down to Memphis. But as far as Real Sociedad, that's a tough test, Rafa. No, I completely agree. And then, and let's say I th I think the the front three that I said, I think that's the one. But I I wouldn't be surprised if Kuman ends up going with the front three that you mentioned. That's if I'm not mistaken. That's they played together against Red Bull Salzburg, and um, what you were saying, that's exactly what they did. Like Memphis and and Griezmann, technically Griezmann started as a false nine, and Memphis on the left, but they were completely intertwined like they were changing positions left and right and i think it was um demir's goal it was basically griezmann did an overlapping run memphis with a great through ball and then griezmann crossed the ball for a demir tap in so i i think i wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if demir gets a nod ahead of uh braithwaite because I, I think alongside gabi they've been the two like young standouts of the of the preseason for for barcelona so that's that's something that could possibly happen. And then again, yeah, like, e like even though it's going to be at the camp, no, and we're going to have fans back. So that's going to help G going against the rest of that is not easy peasy to start of the season, given how we've come to the current state, like literally like 
Messi, freaking Messi, left a week ago. And now we got to start the season. We don't, we hope, but we don't know yet if we're going to be able to have Memphis for that first game, who's been such a, 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 a important part of the preseason. So it, it, it's, it's something that's like you would have preferred to start the league against a, obviously a, a lesser team, to, to put it nicely, because Real Sociedad are a very good team, are, are a good team that can play from the back, a very attacking team that if you're not cave, careful, there, it doesn't matter if you're playing out of the camp. No, they're going to pressure you and you're going to be in danger. So it, it, it's going to be a really, really tough uh, start uh, of the season for Barcelona. Yeah, and we know that we also see that on the road up in San Sebastian is uh, always much, much harder. But this is at home. These are the points you need to get early in the season. And for Real Sociedad, the opposite of Barcelona, Barcelona has had a bit of upheaval, but Real Sociedad has basically stayed the same. They've kept the same team for better or worse. Um, and even all the coach basically brings back his whole team. The only difference is being the backup goalkeeper and the backup left back. I mean, what a, what a great transfer window that must be. But the, you know, that's a double-edged sword for Real Sociedad and actually most of the Liga. As I was looking at the transfers in and out, so last year for the YouTube channel, I made this new faces in the Liga video. And I usually do that every year, or it might have been two years ago, times the flat circle. So it, whatever year it was, I made this new face in the Liga because there's always new transfers coming in, whether it's Eden Hazard or whoever it may be. And it seems like everybody has somebody, right? Any La Liga team has a new player they've tried to inject. But other than, I mean, Eric Lamella, I, I mean, it is one of the biggest injections into La Liga, right? That's what we're saying, that he's one of the top, as I'm going through the list, he's one of the top five best new players in the Liga. Spanish teams had no money. That's the whole thing going back to the CBC thing. There is no money for transfers. So for better or worse, we also see that we're only able to reinforce at goalkeeper and left back just at the back of positions where they lost those other positions. Uh, well, I mean, where they lost the players in those positions. Uh, so last year, they finished fifth, 15 points behind fourth place Sevilla. So that's a pretty big margin between fourth and fifth. One point above Real Betis, who oddly finished sixth with a zero goal differential, while La Real finished with a plus 21 goal for differential. So to tell you that, that stat matters or means something. Uh, so that was their plus 21 goal differential was one better than Sevilla. And a reminder too that Real Sociedad fifth was actually a little bit unfair, even though they were 15 points behind Sevilla. Their first half of the season between August and January had them deserving of a top even three spot. But obviously they fell off quite a bit and different competitions kind of caught up with them. And a reminder too that they did win the Spanish Super Cup. So La Real is a good team and Isak is 22 next month, and he's a player that those who watch the Liga quite often say, hey, why worry about Holland when Isak is in the Liga, right? That he's available for much cheaper next summer. So instead of going Holland fishing again, why don't you look at Isak? He'll be 22 next month. And um, Orzabal, so I don't want to talk about transfers because Barca can't afford you and me yet. So, uh, But Orzabal <laughs> is still not even in his prime yet. And to me, for Real Sociedad, the reliance on David Silva, who is 35 now, going to be 36, that is the worrying sign. But Behind him, they basically set up this huge defensive midfield of Guerrera, Mikel Moreno, uh, Zubimendi, Garidi, and club captain Iramendi, who is never healthy. He's always injured. But they basically set up a gigantic defensive core. You can't play them all at the same time, yes, but they just put all these legs behind David Silva and say, hey, um, old man, go to work. Um, and then their back line is fine. They're not particularly fast, but neither is Brothwaite in case he starts. So um, I, I think the, 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 the two ends, the, the center back pairings and the, and the, and the front or well, the front group for Barcelona. We'll see how what happens there. Then the inverse for for um, we also see. Yeah, I think in the in the midfield it's going to wind up being quite even, and then this will be decided. I think on the margins. Yeah, they're giving uh, Silva the the Juventus treatment that they gave uh, Pirlo when they surrounded him with Marquisio, Vidal, Pogba, and everybody. Basically, it was just like, hey Pirlo, don't worry about defending whatsoever. We got like four guys, five guys. Besides you, that will do all the tackling. So just hey, just focus on the offensive end. So I think that's uh, that, that's a very smart thing on their end because obviously when Silva has the ball at his feet, things happen. He's a magician, even at 35, 36 years old. So by doing that, they're just ensuring that, well, they hope that by doing that, they're going to ensure that Silva stays fit and can give them more uh, more playing time throughout the entire season. But again, yeah, like if they got really good, like veteran players, very good young players, and uh, Isaac, oh yeah, Sawal, he came back from the Olympics. I don't know on their end how 
they're going to treat um, his return if they're just yeah. going to plug him back in or not. But obviously, if he plays, a very dangerous player that's caused a lot of trouble for Barcelona during the, the past few years. So it, it'll be a really hard test. I think Barcelona are up for it. I'm very optimistic. Um, but if we don't come out focused whatsoever, it could be a long afternoon, night, slash night. 